I'd like to take you to the date of uh, November 1st, 2022. Um, did you accompany Joy, was that the date that Joy Phillips was told she was placed on, on administrative leave? Yes, it was. Okay. And you accompanied her to her office uh, after she received that news, didn't you? No, I did not. Um, other officers accompanied her to her office, didn't, didn't they? Yes, I believe that to be correct. And I believe one of them was Captain Whitmire. That sounds correct. Um, at some point, did uh, Captain Whitmire call you, didn't he? Uh, no. I'm going to object right now. Um, I'm sorry. These questions are surrounding an ongoing criminal case in which uh, several officers, including Lieutenant Rathel, are a suspect. And so I think it just doesn't make sense. We need to just assert the Fifth Amendment here um, because we we shouldn't be having someone testify about something that uh, right now they're looking for a special prosecutor on this case um, because it was not charged. And I just don't think it's fair to put Lieutenant Rathel in this situation. So I'm going to ask to assert the Fifth Amendment in regards to these questions on his behalf. He wishes to claim the Fifth Amendment. He can do that. Well, obviously, after um, hearing that, then that's what I'll do. I will uh, take the Fifth Amendment. Fraction of your life to wonder free. Losing everything is like the sun going down on me. Don't let the sun go down on me. Although I search myself, there's always someone else I see. I just allow a, a fragment of your life to wander free. But losing everything is like the sun. The uh, uh, respondent would call uh, Lieutenant Raffel. Lieutenant Raffel. I remind you, you remain under oath from yesterday. Yes, sir. Good morning, Lieutenant. Good morning. Um, in all the accusations uh, and uh, complaints filed against Joy Phillips, uh, have you ever interviewed her? Yes, I've interviewed her a few times. Uh, have uh, you interviewed her when she was named as a focus officer or accused member? No. And uh, in fact, you, you did not interview her with regard to the various accusations filed against her by uh, the city in March 2023. Isn't that correct? That is correct. Uh, nor did you interview her uh, regarding uh, the accusations against uh, uh, Detective Phillips uh, in July 2023 regarding the new ac uh, allegation, uh, did you? Uh, which, uh, what are we talking about for July 2023? The amended charge. Oh, that's right. That's correct. Um, you, you did not interview her regarding that. Can you go ahead and uh, just clarify which charge you're talking about? Uh, sure. The, um, Oh, um, yeah. Uh, uh, sir, that's, the amended charge concerns the deleted videos. So 
um, concerning that, I actually did interview her. Um, it just happened to take place in the original investigation. Um, but after that letter was amended, I did not interview Detective Phillips. And at the time you did speak to her, she was not the focus officer at that point? That is correct. Um, so really, no one uh, from the uh, police department has interviewed Joy Phillips regarding really any of the accusations that have been leveled against her? Uh, the current ones, uh, not to my knowledge, nobody has interviewed her. Um, isn't it uh, a departmental policy and, and something called for in the, uh, in the collecting, collective bargaining agreement with the Fraternal Order of Police that uh, an officer who is the subject of a, of a accusation uh, she'll be interviewed and allowed to present uh, her side of the story no I do not believe that to be true well uh, is there a requirement to interview suspects in criminal cases uh, this is not a criminal case so they really necessarily don't mirror each other And actually, you know, I don't believe that there is um, an exact requirement that you have to interview somebody in a criminal case either. But, but you will do so if there is an opportunity. I guess that would be dependent on the case and the uh, direction the investigation is heading. Um, you interviewed everyone involved in the allegations arising out of the uh, the uh, suspected burglary of the uh, B's three building, except Joy, isn't that the case? No, that is not. That is incorrect. You interviewed all the. Uh, you interviewed Detective Payne. You interviewed Detective Clay's. You interviewed Detective Barron. You interviewed Officer Young. Uh, you interviewed the uh, uh, daughter of the owner of the property. You would have interviewed the, the uh, drivers of the car if they hadn't been in the hospital. I uh, mean, you interviewed just about everyone except Joy Phillips, didn't you? No, that's uh, incorrect. You listed several people there that I did not interview. Who didn't you interview? Uh, I believe you said uh, Sergeant Young. Um, I think you mentioned the uh, reporting party, the daughter of the victim. Um, I, did, I know those were two that I did not interview during this investigation. Okay. Um, you may have mentioned others. You, you personally didn't interview uh, uh, the, the reporting party, um, the, the, the owner's daughter, but she was interviewed by another detective, wasn't she? Yes, yes she was. Uh, isn't it uh, stated in Article 26 of the collective bargaining agreement with the Fraternal Order of Police that an, the an, an accused member is, is to be uh, um, interviewed w when there is an allegation of misconduct? Uh, I don't believe that's true. Um, if you have something that uh, says that exactly, I'd be happy to take a look uh, at it. Uh, yes, sir. I'm, I'm going to ha uh, hand you Exhibit 28, which is a portion of the, well, actually, I'll, I'll ask you to identify the document, sir. Okay. At the respondents exhibit 28 yeah yes your honor um, uh, sir could you identify this document uh, based on what I have here this appears to be a portion of the uh, CBA, uh, specifically pages 23, 24, 25, and 26, um, has got various uh, portions of it that are highlighted. And, and Lieutenant, just for the record, could you explain what, what CBA means? Uh, the collective bargaining agreement between the FOP and the city of Elkhart. And uh, sir, I'm going to point to uh, an area that I'd like you to read. 
five. Yes. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Sir, could you please display exhibit uh, uh, 20, 26. 28. 28. The front page, 23. It'll be page 23, section 5. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, sir. Yeah, page 23. It'll be under article 26. So you got to go down. Keep going down. And it should be right at the bottom there. Uh, section 5 reads, whenever a police officer is under investigation or subjected to interrogation by members of his or her department for any reason which could lead to disciplinary action, demotion, dismissal, or criminal charges, such investigation or interrogation shall be conducted according to the following procedures as outlined, and then it lists a website there. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Did did uh, that happen in the case of Joy Phillips? Uh, yes, the uh, this portion was followed, the section five. She wasn't interviewed though, was she? That's correct. And it doesn't, uh, based on how that reads to me, there's nothing there that says that uh, Detective Phillips uh, shall be interviewed or um, is granted uh, any right to be interviewed. So she never, she was never given the opportunity to tell her story. She was never interviewed. That is correct. I'll take that back. Please, sir, I'd like you like you to continue reading the the highlighted portions. All the ones in green, or just the yellow one? The green ones, are all all of them. Let me. All right, so we're back to uh, Exhibit Twenty Eight here. Um, I'm gonna continue reading on page twenty four. All of the bullet points. Uh, so the first one starts, law enforcement officers shall, if disciplinary action is expected, be notified of the investigation, the nature of the alleged violation, and be notified of the outcome of the investigation and the re recommendations made to superiors by the investigators. Next bullet point, questioning of a law enforcement officer should be conducted for a reasonable length of time and preferably while the officer is on duty unless exigent, uh, exigent circumstances apply. The next one, questioning of a law enforcement officer should take place at the office, offices of those conducting the investigation or at the place where the officer reports to work unless the officer consents to another location. Uh, next bullet point, law enforcement officers will be questioned by no more than two investigators and he or she shall be informed of the name, rank, and command of the officers conducting the investigation. Next bullet point, law enforcement Officers under investigation are entitled to have counsel or any other individual of their choice present at the interrogation. Uh, next bullet point, law enforcement officers cannot be threatened, harassed, or promised rewards to induce the answering of any questions. Next bullet point, law enforcement officers are entitled to a hearing with notification in advance of the date, access to transcripts and other relevant documents and evidence generated by the hearing and to representation by counsel or another non-attorney representative at the hearing. The next bullet point states, law enforcement officers shall have the opportunity, opportunity to comment in writing on any adverse materials placed in his or her personnel file. And the last one states, uh, law enforcement officers cannot be subject to retaliation for the exercise of these 
or any other rights under federal, state, or local law. Thank you, Lieutenant. Uh, uh, sir, isn't it pretty clear that the collective bargaining agreement contemplates that uh, an accused officer will be interviewed as the focus officer? No. I think that lays out just some guidelines if one was to be conducted. So it's your testimony that any member of the Elkhart Police Department can be uh, accused of grievous misconduct uh, and does not have the right to defend himself uh, in an interview and tell his side of the story? No, that's not correct. You just said an interview wasn't required, didn't you? It's not required, but as the process plays out, there are several other areas where an officer is afforded uh, ample opportunity and, and, and the ability to defend themselves or to um, you know, pass along information that they think is pertinent to that investigation. Uh, do you not agree that according to Lexapol, there are well over 20 different policies that reference the interview process? Uh, I don't know the exact number. Uh, it, is that a yes or a no? That is uh, me stating I don't know if there's 20. I'm sure that it's mentioned in there several times. I just don't know the uh, total amount. Um, sir, have you, uh, um, uh, do you have any knowledge where, uh, in, uh, involving a situation in which Sergeant Young's honesty has been questioned? Um, I believe it was brought up during the grievance hearing, uh, in front of the Board of Public Safety, uh, the two-day one that we talked about yesterday on October 11th and October 25th. Um, In, in all of the accusations field, uh, fielded and, and accepted by your office, why was there never an accusation of Detective Phillips lying about Dustin Young being a Brady cop, uh, as she stated during the, um, uh, during the Board of Public Safety hearing? Can you repeat that question? Yes, sir. Uh, Joy Phillips has never uh, been accused of, of being a Brady cop for the reason uh, uh, of lying about Detective Young. I mean, that's, that's never been brought up against her, has it? Uh, no, I believe when you read that, le uh, that letter from Prosecutor uh, Becker, it, it didn't state uh, anything about her testimony about Dustin Young. Okay, but she's never been accused of being a Brady cop as regards D Dustin Young, has she? Although uh, it's been alleged that she's lied about him, but uh, there's never been a specific charge that she, uh, uh, she is a, um, uh, uh, she lied about Detective Young being a Brady cop. I don't believe that was uh, specifically mentioned on that charging letter. Why not? Uh, you'll have to ask the person that wrote that charging letter. Uh, do you believe that it, uh, uh, an officer's propensity for dishonesty uh, to be relevant when he, when he testifies? Yes, I believe we discussed that um, quite a bit yesterday. Um, did your office, but your office didn't take that into consideration when uh, um, that he had a history of dishonesty when he inappropriately filed his complaint through an uh, email email to Captain Whitmire? Uh, he didn't file a complaint. He sent an email, though, Okay. with the substance of a complaint. Is that not true? I believe he did. Okay. Um, do you believe that an officer's uh, ability to provide uh, honest uh, and uh, integrity-based testimony to be pivotable in any kind of court proceeding? Yes. Okay. Um, should, an op uh, uh, sh should officers with a propensity for dishonesty uh, be allowed to testify? Um, I believe if you, you know, when we read that letter yesterday, it had mentioned that, um, you know, if, if an officer that was 
uh, Brady officer, they would, uh, their testimony would need to be corroborated by other uh, means, and their testimony alone uh, probably would not suffice. Now, uh, sir, you're uh, in charge of, of professional standards at, at uh, the Elkhart Police Department, isn't that correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay. Does the Elkhart Police Department keep documentation of officers uh, who have uh, provided questionable statements or, or about whom there are concerns that the officer has a propensity for dishonesty? I'm sure somewhere around there there might be some documents or of, of that nature. I, I'm not sure, I guess, what you're trying to get at with well, your if question. Well, the, if the department had them, wouldn't you be the person uh, uh, to know? Not necessarily. Who would know? Whoever had the document. Okay. Does the department keep a list of Brady cops? Not to my knowledge. Does the department keep uh, documentation of officers who are found to have misrepresented facts in court? Do they keep documentation? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, if if that is known, is it is that recorded anywhere in professional standards or or elsewhere in the chief's office or elsewhere? Well, I would say I, I think if uh, somebody were to uh, receive a letter such as uh, what we presented yesterday. Uh, stating that, then yes, we would keep that letter. Okay. Uh, perhaps, uh, perhaps just for the record, it would help if you uh, uh, defined what a what a Brady cop is. Uh, so essentially, and this was discussed in the grievance hearing as well. Um, but I'm going to object. I just think this calls for a legal conclusion at this point, and this is not a lawyer. Um, you know the the. Not to get too in-depth, essentially, if uh, an officer provides sworn testimony, uh, whether that's under oath or affirmation, um, and they know it to be untruthful, um, then essentially that's where you get into the realm of um, Brady. Sir, uh, if you know, does the sworn testimony have to be in a criminal proceeding, or, or can it be anywhere? Um, you know, the, to my knowledge, um, I've always thought it had to be in a uh, an official setting. Um, I think if you were just um, caught lying to your neighbor, I don't think that's going to uh, make you a, a Brady cop. Okay. Um, does the Elkhart Police Department use the term uh, Brady cop as, uh, and essentially as a shorthand for for officers with a propensity for dishonesty? Uh, not necessarily. What does what is that expression used for then? Uh, if you are deemed a Brady officer again, such as uh, something along the lines of the letter that um, I had read in yesterday, then um, you know that term might be used. Um, but uh, you could use other other words. Um, I guess you could use that they're untruthful, dishonest, deceitful, a liar. Um, there's many words that you could use to um, talk about something of that. Perhaps, perhaps I should have asked, what is the expression used at, uh, customarily at uh, Elkhart Police Department? So Brady would essentially, as we had just talked, if you were uh, found to have provided uh, untruthful testimony uh, while you were sworn in under oath or affirmation, um, and that was discovered, then that's where you would probably use that terminology. Okay. Is Dustin Young a Brady cop? Not to my knowledge. Uh, does he have a reputation for dishonesty? Not to my knowledge. Is Carl Conway a Brady cop? Uh, I believe so. Has, uh, to, to your knowledge, has the uh, prosecutor ever written a, a letter to the police department stating that uh, uh, she considers Car uh, Carl Conway to be a Brady cop? I have never received a letter from the prosecutor. 
Um, Do you know if Carl Conway is described as a Brady cop in his termination letter? I do not know. Has Detective Phillips ever advised you of, uh, uh, of harassment, retaliation, or uh, discrimination, or a hostile work environment at the El Elkhart Police Department? Yes. Uh, were these complaints investigated? Yes. Okay. Did you investigate them? Um, one for sure, maybe more. Um, I can't speak for other uh, investigators that were working back in, back in the Office of Professional Standards. Okay. Do you know if the city, uh, w w were there records kept of this investigation? Yes. Do you know if the city produced these records in discovery? Uh, I do not. Were you asked to produce these records? I don't recall. Do you know of any uh, police officers at Elkhart who recorded other officers while on duty? Are we talking about like on a like a recording device other than the body cameras uh, and Yes, sir, other than the official body cam. Uh, nothing is jumping out at me. Uh, I'm not going to say that it's uh, didn't happen or not possible, but I, nothing's jumping out uh, where I could say yes. So it is possible. Sure, it's possible. Do you know of any uh, other officers or detectives who have personally owned cameras or uh, recording devices in their offices? Not to my knowledge. Is it possible? Yes, it could be possible. Um, has any other officer been questioned or reprimanded for having a, uh, a personally owned camera or recording device in his office? Uh, not to my knowledge. Uh, a uh, personally owned uh, uh, camera or recording device is not the same thing as a as a personal communication device, is it? That's kind of a, a broad question. Um, I guess that would be a very subjective thing left open to your interpretation of various definitions of wording there. Okay. Wasn't it in your, uh, your, in the city's testimony yesterday that they're not the same thing? Uh, that could have been, that could have been. By, reper by personal communication device, the policy means a cell phone, doesn't it? Uh, it certainly may. I'd, uh, I'd like to take you to the date of uh, November 1st, 2022. Um, did you accompany Joy, was that the date that Joy Phillips was told she was placed on, on administrative leave? Yes, it was. Okay. And you accompanied her to her office uh, after she received that news, didn't you? No, I did not. Um, other officers accompanied her to her office, didn't, didn't they? Yes, I believe that to be correct. And I believe one of them was Captain Whitmire. That sounds correct. Um, at some point, did uh, Captain Whitmire call you, didn't he? Uh, no. 
I'm going to object right now. Um, I'm sorry. These questions are surrounding an ongoing criminal case in which uh, several officers, including Lieutenant Rathel, are a suspect. And so I think it just doesn't make sense. We need to just assert the Fifth Amendment here um, because we we shouldn't be having someone testify about something that uh, right now they're looking for a special prosecutor on this case um, because it was not charged. And I just don't think it's fair to put Lieutenant Rathel in this situation. So I'm going to ask to assert the Fifth Amendment in regards to these questions on his behalf. He wishes to claim the Fifth Amendment. He can do that. Well, obviously, after um, hearing that, then that's what I'll do. I will uh, take the Fifth Amendment. Uh, well, then, Your Honor, I will... Um, uh, uh, of, of course, I accept that uh, uh, the lieutenant has the right to claim the Fifth Amendment. Uh, I would simply ask that the commission that uh, declined to consider any uh, uh, alleged misconduct regarding uh, the November 1st incident uh, as uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Officer Phillips has been deprived of the opportunity to cross-examine uh, uh, her accusers regarding that incident. Not sure I understand your point. To, to the extent that uh, uh, Joy Phillips is accused of any wrongdoing it, on the, in the no November 1st incident, I believe that the, the commission uh, should not uh, should disregard those accusations and uh, not take uh, and not take any action against her regarding the November first incident because she has in effect been uh, denied the opportunity to cross examine her accusers regarding that specific incident. I think that's premature at this point. You can raise it later. Yet, yeah, yes, Your Honor. Especially at closing. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, detective didn't uh, in in Sergeant Roundtree's audio that was displayed yesterday. Didn't he acknowledge that uh, the reason that um, uh, Joy Phillips did not want to write the search warrant was that there was not probable cause for the search of the of the gold Cadillac? Um, I'd have to rewatch that section. Did Detective Phillips provide you with audio of, her, of, the, of the former uh, chief telling her that there was no discipline in her file? Uh, excuse me, the current chief and the former assistant chief. No, he's the assistant chief now. Uh, I'm referring to Officer uh, Whitmire. Could you restate that question? Yes, sir. I'd be, I'd be happy to. Did uh, um, did Joy Phillips not provide you with audio and of a conversation with her and uh, um, now Assistant Chief Whitmire, uh, assuring her that there was no discipline in her file? Um, I don't know that there was a specific audio that uh, where they had a conversation and Assistant Chief Whitmire uh, assured her there was no discipline in her file. Um, I think what you may be referring to is there was a recording where they had sat down when Assistant Chief Whitmire was in charge of the Office of Professional Standards and they went through the record management system uh, and he was um, uh, sitting down with her to try to uh, discuss uh, any um, cases where she may have been uh, mentioned as a focus officer. Uh, didn't and nothing was uh, sustained, correct? No discipline. Um, for what? For the uh, in the RMS entries, there was no sustained, uh, no record of sustained discipline against her. Uh, probably at that time, I believe uh, that would be the case. I think we testified yesterday to the fact, first time there was recommendation um, or sustained uh, policy violations was the. Uh, from the Captain's Review Board on August 11, uh, 2022. Okay. 
That audio was from 2021, wasn't it? I don't know when it was from. Uh, when Whitmire was. Mm -hmm. Do you know when uh, uh, Chief Whit Whitmire was in uh, internal affairs? I don't know the exact time. Wasn't it right before you got there? That was a portion of it, yes. And what year was that? I got back there in 2021. So I believe, uh, and you'd have to ask uh, Chief Whitmire to get clarification, but I think there was changeover maybe that year between him and uh, his predecessor there. Didn't uh, uh, Chief Whitmire testify at the Board of Public Safety hearing that there was no discipline in Joy's file? I, I don't recall. Uh, is an employee action plan the same thing as an RMS entry? I guess I'm not clear on your question. Is it discipline? Is what discipline? An, uh, an employee action plan. Um, can you show me uh, what you're talking about when you're referring to the employee action plan? Um, officer, I'm going to uh, show you uh, what's been marked as Chief's Exhibit 20 from the Board of Safety hearing. But, but it, it's Chief's. Uh, from this hearing or the. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I, I apologize, sir. That is Chief's Exhibit 20 from this. Uh, this hearing, and if uh, and and yes, if if IT could put that uh, on the on the board, I'd appreciate it. Be be chief's exhibit. Sir, have you had a chance to look at Chief's Exhibit 20? Yes. Okay. What is Chief's Exhibit 20? So this is a RMS entry into the employee module. Um, see this, so this was going to be a uh, counseling from Lieutenant John Hamill. Uh, it's time stamped uh, May 13, 2019. You, you don't need to read the whole thing, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, does this have to be signed? No. So R RMS don't RMS entries need to be signed, don't they? Well, so there's just absolutely no way when you type into this portion of that module, there's no way to uh, sign a signature on the, the computer. Um, so this is just going to be text only. And then um, typically whoever enters it, uh, most of the time we'll just time stamp it. Don't RMS entries have to be signed to be effective? You can't sign them. It's not an option in RMS. There's no way to pick up a pen and sign a screen and get that to go into the text or narrative box.
Are you familiar with the employee action plans uh, imposed on Joy Phillips? Again, I'm, I'm not sure what you're uh, talking about when you say an employee action plan. Well, uh, the the header of Chief uh, Chief's Exhibit 19 uh, says employee action plan for for uh, Phillips Joy R. Can I see Exhibit 19? I got 20 up here. I'm going to hand you 19 and 18, both of which uh, are labeled employee action plans. Did you have a question about 19? If you did, could you repeat it? So those are employee action. Well, first of all, are you familiar with the employee action plans uh, imposed on, on Joy Phillips? No. Um, so I think where we're having a little confusion here is you keep saying employee action plan as if there's a plan to do something or there's some um, something along those lines. This just says it's an employee action, not a plan. And I think that's where I was getting confused with you. So these ones are uh, titled as just employee actions for Phillips Joy. It doesn't say RMS entry either. At the title? No, it does not. So it's not an RMS entry? Well, this module is in the RMS system, the record management system. So it is in, an entry into RMS specifically to the employee module. And what years are those from? So Chief's Exhibit 19 is from February 15th, 2019. Uh, Chief's Exhibit 18 is going to be from January 2nd, 2017. Chief's, uh, Chief's Exhibit 17 is from December 3rd, 2016. And Chief's Exhibit 20 is from May 13th, 2019. Isn't there another one you reported in the charging letter from uh, March 27th, 2023? Uh, I don't think so. I think it said four, and I have four here. If you could point to that part of the charging letter, I'd, I'd be happy to take a look at it. Um, uh, are you are you familiar with any accusation Joy Phillips made that uh, uh, made against uh, Joy Phillips, excuse me, by Sergeant Roundtree. Could you restate that? Yes. Uh, are you familiar with any accusation made by Sergeant Roundtree against Joy Phillips uh, that uh, uh, that occurred in January of 2022? I do not believe so. Uh, this would be uh, regarding 
Sergeant Roundtree counseling Joy Phillips for dishonesty? Does that, um, are you, uh, ring a bell? Uh, no, if you, if you had some documentation, again, I'd be more than happy to take a look at it to try to refresh my memory. Um, no further question. Uh, well, hold on. Sir, I'm going to uh, hand you a portion of the uh, uh, notice of charges, tentative hearing, and, uh, and uh, hearing date and rights, dated March 27th, 2023. I'm only going to hand you page 13, however. I'd like you to read the uh, portion of that document that is... That paragraph. You want this last paragraph here? Is that what you want? Yes, sir. Okay. And what is this from? This is from uh, a. Uh, well, I will. I will hand you the whole thing. I'm just trying to, so I can sure. speak to what exhibit I'm reading from here. You have the exhibit number here. Uh, Okay. Later, sir. All right. So, read, yeah, absolutely. Read the, the paragraph. Yep. So, unknown exhibit number, but I'll just try to kind of put some I'm going to object. Can we identify this document? What is this document that we're that we're reading from? Clarification, this is the original charging letter, not the amended charging letter. All right, so this is, uh, as the attorney stated, the original charging letter, not the amended one. Um, and I'm going to be reading from page 13, the bottom uh, paragraph. On July 7, 2022, you were counseled by Sergeant Roundtree regarding telling the truth. Sergeant Roundtree reports that on January 7, 2022, you contacted him and said you helped with a search warrant for midnight shift and came into the department and asked if you could use the call-in time to be an early workday. Sergeant Roundtree advised you it would be okay. Once Sergeant Roundtree arrived to work, he spoke to Detective Runyon about the on-call he asked Detective Runyon if you assisted the midnight shift. Detective, Run Detective Runyon stated no. Detective Runyon stated uh, you arrived after the completion of the search warrant. Detective Runyon said he went home when you arrived at the Elkhart Police Department. Detective Runyon stated that dispatch attempted to contact primary on-call uh, yourself twice but got no answer. Captain Price advised Sergeant Roundtree to talk or counsel you about the on-call. Sergeant Roundtree advised you that Detective Runyon stated you didn't respond to the on-call for assistance with writing a search warrant. Sergeant Roundtree advised 
your lying about coming in and assisting Detective Running on the search warrant was not acceptable. Sergeant Roundtree advised you that coming in early after missing an on-call is unacceptable. You informed Sergeant Roundtree that midnight shift had another incident in which you assisted with. It was unclear what incident because it was confirmed uh, midnight did not, midnights did not have another incident. You were warned about lying and to not make the same mistake. Thank you, Lieutenant. You're welcome. Uh, is this the same letter? Uh, is this the same letter the commission signed? Uh, yeah, on the first page, I believe. Stamped. Yes, it appears that it was signed. Uh, isn't it true that that accusation by Sergeant Roundtree was proved to be false? Uh, not to my knowledge. Didn't you know that it was false because uh, Detective Phillips provided you with audio of that meeting and you discovered that Sergeant Roundtree lied to you? Um, I think I was provided with a recording uh, regarding maybe a portion of the meeting. I don't recall if it was the entire meeting they had or if the uh, recording was just a portion of that meeting. Didn't it show that Sergeant Roundtree had lied to you? No, it did not. Did you reprimand uh, Sergeant Roundtree for lying during an official investigation? No, I did not. Did you interview Detective Phillips as a focus officer in that or any of these accusations? Can you state that question again? You didn't interview Detective Phillips regarding that accusation? Uh, which accusation? That, Sar uh, that uh, Sergeant Roundtree lied about her? No, there was, I don't believe there was an accusation. You didn't interview Detective Phillips to get her version of the event, though, did you? No. Okay. No further questions. Can you explain to us why you didn't find it necessary to interview Detective Phillips for the accusations before us today? Um, so as we talked about yesterday, we already had um, sworn testimony that was provided during a two-day hearing. We had a 21-page defense uh, that she had prepared. Um, we also had audio recordings that she had created. Um, and these uh, documents and recordings were her um, sp speaking and giving her version of, of these events. Um, uh, there was no need to sit down and, and rehash these and, and get you know second, third, fourth versions of these events. And has Detective Phillips been provided an opportunity to tell her story at the captain's review board? Yes. No further questions. Sorry. Once Joy Phillips got to tell her story to a cap captain's review board, she was already subject to uh, career, potentially career ending discipline, wasn't she? No, that's not correct. Okay. She was already subject to discipline for all charges had been brought against her. Yeah, allegations of policy violations, um, yes, but uh, discipline. You're not subjected to discipline at the captain's review board. They just make a recommendation um, and then give that to the chief of police and he's the only one or she's the only one that can actually uh, make a determination on discipline for an officer. No further questions. You, you uh, answered some questions about uh, former Lieutenant Conway. Um, is he currently a police officer? No, he is not. So it's not really possible for him to be a Brady cop, correct? Uh, that would be correct. He's not a cop anymore. He's not an officer. No further questions. Lieutenant, was, uh, was Officer Conway fired or was he allowed to retire? Um, I believe he resigned. 
um, prior to having um, a hearing here. No further cross. Were there disciplinary proceedings to terminate uh, former Lieutenant Conway at the time he resigned? Yes, they were already in the works and uh, in the process. No further questions. No cross, sir. Any recall for Lieutenant Rathel? No, no, Your Honor. At this point, then, thank you for your testimony, Lieutenant. Uh, you're free to go. But right, thank you, sir. You may be recalled for a reason not known presently. Okay. Thank you.